The Ghent St. Peter's railway station is more than a century old. It's the most important railway station in Flanders today. Every weekday, some 54,000 passengers take the train here. Most of them come by bus or tram, but many arrive on bikes. A small number use their car. The number of passengers will certainly increase in the near future. The need to bring the station and its surroundings in step with 21st century requirements is therefore obvious. Two thousand seven saw the start of a major construction project, the Ghent St. Peter's project, a joint enterprise between the National Belgian Railway Company, Eurostation, Infrabel, public transport company De Laine, the Flemish region, and the city of Ghent. Ghent St. Peter's is to become a gateway to a modern city, a central hub where train, tram, bus, taxi, car, or bicycle, and pedestrians smoothly interconnect with each other. What changes will the train station go through? Drastic ones. All that will remain will be the entrance, as it is a listed structure. The ceiling and wall paintings have been restored, and the entrance has been fitted with a new glass canopy. The plane trees around the Maria Hendrika Square are also protected as a listed landmark in the city. The rest of the station and its area will be thoroughly modernized. Deze trein stopt in Merelbeke, Mellen, Gontrode, Landskouter, Moortzele. The new station will be spacious, bright and comfortable. The 12 platforms will be made up to 4 meters wider and a lot longer. They'll be covered by a roof constructed mainly of glass. Glass canopies will extend over the platforms where there'll be comfortable waiting rooms, seating and wind breaks. IC train to Brussels Central and Brussels Airport, track 11. Sunlight will shine down into the new open hall underneath as the railway platforms contain almost transparent floor elements. Two stairways, two pairs of stylish escalators and two lifts per platform will make the station facilities easily accessible to everyone. The large open space underneath the tracks allows commuters to switch from a train to a tram, bus or bike, guided along the shortest possible route. This open area spans about 35,000 square meters. It leaves enough room for numerous services, shops, bars and restaurants in a pleasant and open atmosphere. Optimizing and reducing the number of switches, a fourth track between Ghent and Bruges and the building of a new railway flyover is making it safer and faster for trains to enter and leave the station. The spectacular transformation of the train station started at the St. Denis Avenue. The earthen railway bank is excavated. Flyovers on steel columns support the new tracks and platforms. Demolishing and constructing in difficult conditions and in a very congested area has to be achieved with the station running at full capacity while assuring a safe way through to commuters. Platforms 11 and 12 were the first to be recommissioned, fully equipped with stairs and escalators and lifts. The St. Denise Avenue gets a fully-fledged station entry featuring plenty of glass and light. A new square, the Queen Mathilde Square, will be home to an S-shaped building for offices and apartments with a bike point.
When finished, Ghent St. Peter's will be a public transport hub smoothly interconnecting all means of transport. The bus station is also being built in stages. Half the station is already in full use with 12 clearly indicated platforms and screens featuring real-time travel information. Once the station is truly completed, the 12 platforms will be twice as long with room for 24 articulated buses. Only once the entire railway station complex has literally found its footing can the final new tram station be built, diagonally underneath the train tracks featuring 12 stops along four parallel tracks. To keep Tramline 1 running during the major works, first a tram tunnel was dug and temporary platforms were built underneath the wing of the new office tower. Once the new tram station is finished, the temporary tram platforms can be dismantled. The photo wall made by artist Beat Streli is the western limit of the new station complex. Thousands of bicycles are currently parked or left near the station, most of them exposed to the elements. A first section of the covered bicycle park has been completed. It currently has room for 2,400 bicycles. Cyclists can ride down gently sloping ramps to access the parking area. With the parking area being accessible from five different entrances, two spacious underground garages will hold at least 11,000 bikes in complete security. In the future, a fluid underground north-to-south connection for pedestrians and cyclists. Stairs, escalators and lifts to tram and train platforms will take passengers directly to and from the heart of the station. Here again, daylight and a pleasant atmosphere are brought down into the basement level. This is achieved in part by a sloping garden on the Queen Maria Hendrika Square. In the past, motorists used to take their car every day up to the station looking for a nearby place to park. Since the end of 2010, they've been able to park their vehicle in the underground car park with a capacity of about 2,750 cars. The users are mostly commuters, but in the near future, they'll also include employees and visitors to the new offices, shops and residential units. The surrounding streets allow residents parking only and parking restrictions apply. It makes the neighbourhood more enjoyable for local businesses and residents. It's important for the neighbourhood's development that the area is easily accessible by car. Consequently, a new road was built connecting the R4 Ghent Ring Road to the station. The Timishek Tunnel takes you underneath the tracks and into the car park. This connecting road should not become a new corridor into the heart of the city. The quality of life in the residential areas has to be preserved. To compensate for the construction of this new road, the Overmeer's Nature Green area has been redeveloped and open to the public. This is an area of about 70,000 square meters, or 7 hectares, part of which is set up as an educational nature reserve. <laughs> the Ghent St. Peter's Station neighborhood is a major growth area for working and living and an area for condensed urban development. The first part of Queen Fabiola Avenue has been redeveloped, making it wider and adding a double row of trees. The avenue will be part of the green axis connecting the Bla Mirsen and the Citadel Park. Along the avenue from the station to the River Lys stretches a building site of 8 hectares. It's split up into three zones. A first part lies on the roof of the station's underground car park. Mostly offices and apartments will be built. 
there's also room for commercial, sports and leisure facilities. This 90-metre-high office tower is the first to be realised. It houses the Flemish government administration. Further down to the River Lys, the development is focused on green living. New squares and a park will be built, as well as meeting facilities for the residents. The entire project has a huge impact on the surroundings. The opinions of residents and future users matter. That's why the local community and other stakeholders are regularly consulted about topics such as mobility, how the public domain is to be used and how the new project development is going. This is done via dialogue and feedback sessions, workshops and also via social media. During these sweeping redevelopment works, the station has to remain fully accessible. We want to make sure that all information about these constant changes reaches you in time. If you have any questions or remarks, please contact the Information Centre. Infopunt Project Gets St. Peters.